What is up, everybody? And welcome to episode 100, our centennial, our live celebration Ooh. of 100 episodes of this show, which is just fucking crazy because I can't believe <laughs> it. we made it to 100. But I'm just very excited to be here with a lovely group of friends. It's girls' night, as MJ put it, featuring me. So. <laughs> girls' night plus Adrian. <laughs> He's I'm tagging along. It. Yeah, yeah, I'm just tagging along on my own show, whatever. But I love all of you, and I'm very, very excited to be here. I'll go around and introduce everyone clockwise, starting with Crystal. Oh, starting with me. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I am Crystal Matar. I wrote um, that beast called Legacy of the Brightwash. Um, it's done stuff. It's It's been a finalist and shit. <laughs> it's done stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's doing its thing. Um, my list is just so long. I also uh, am the co-host for Dripping Bucket podcast with yeah. Mike Lauren Fletcher, the granddaddy of Grindark. Um, and I am over it before we go blog. So I'm kind of all over the place in this community. I've like touched all the things. I know too many people, more people than I deserve. Um, and I'm really happy to be here. Oh, thanks, Crystal. And uh, Greta? Hi, everyone. I'm Greta Kelly. I am the author of The Frozen Crown, The Seven Queen, and The Queen of Days, which is a standalone, uh, which just came out in October. And I'm really excited because just this week I found out that it won an audiobook award. So Ooh, if you guys are cool. into audiobooks, it was narrated Damn. by one of the voice actors from uh, the Critical Role Amazon show, Legends of Vox Machina, which I'm obsessed nice. with. So <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> But Amazing. yeah, I'm Congrats. all over uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at Greta K. Kelly. If anyone wants to talk critical role with me, I'm there. <laughs> right on. Genevieve? Uh, hi, I'm Genevieve Gornacek. I'm the author of The Witch's Heart and The Weaver and the Witch Queen. And I'm super excited to um, be back on the show because um, it was fun the past couple times. And now it's fun <laughs> with more friends. So yeah. Yeah. thanks for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure yeah i just like gathered all of your little like i think you started as like debut author yeah. friends and now it's just yes. you all become sophomore and beyond yeah <laughs> right oh we're growing up together yeah <laughs> and next up my co-host the true to my own solo the joker to my commander shepherd my dear mj coon hello thanks hello. to see everybody <laughs> happy to hang up <laughs> I don't know if I need to introduce myself. I think people, yeah, are people, people who watch the, the show. people who listen to the show or watch yeah. know who I'm Jay is. Like, and if you want to who is this girl? <laughs> you want to support her work, get the babies, the blue baby yeah, among because... thieves. And then the thick ass the baby. Thick ass thieves. <laughs> the if you want to support baby. MJ's work. Yeah. <laughs> and take just like whatever, Sebastian de Castell, for calling me out on calling it thick ass thieves. I will always call it that and whatever. <laughs> I love it though. <laughs> uh, and lastly, Jenny Dewis. How are you? Hi, doing very well. Hi, I'm J.S. Dewis. I am video game writer by day and novelist by night. Uh, my debut series is The Divide, which includes The Last Watch and The Exiled Fleet, and The Relentless Legion will be coming in November. And then I also have a standalone called Rubicon. So yeah, yeah. all science fiction. Very science fiction, but very fucking awesome. Thanks. And if anyone doesn't know me, I'm Adrian M. Gibson, your co-host. <laughs> I don't know your how. <laughs> your, yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Who Who's the hell Joker? is that guy? Who's this Joker <laughs> in Girls Night? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to go check out my debut novel, Mushroom Blues, it's out now. If you want some fungal detective noir and all that goodness, some body horror, some fun times. You definitely some, want it. Yeah. yeah. Some mushrooms. Some it. mushies all up in your business. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, someone, uh, Ed Crocker this morning. Mushrooms in my business. <laughs> <laughs> I Probably I not. Put them there specifically. It feels, like, uh, feels like you should go to the doctor for that. But that's yeah, just, that's just me. It's, that it's is taking me. fungus among us to a different level that I don't think we were ready for. <laughs> <laughs> we're like four that's, minutes into this. We're off to a good start, aren't we? <laughs> that's the that's the uh, the erotica version that someone will write of. Mushrooms. There you go. That, yeah, yours is thick ass thieves, of course. Mine is <laughs> is still mushroom blues, but mushroom you know, the blues all in your business. <laughs> Oh my God. All right. Well, I want to kick this off. I'm very, very happy to have you all here. You've all been on the show before. Crystal, you were on like episode seven, I think. Really? So you're, yeah, you were early on. We talked about food and fantasy. Jenny was yeah. on episode 13 when we talked space opera. 
Uh, Genevieve and Greta came on later on. MJ, you were a guest before you even became a co-host, which is wild. Um, so I just want to thank, I mean, every single author that has been on for the past hundred episodes, every person that has listened to the show or watched it. You're all amazing. <gasps> Genevieve has hearts in her <laughs> heart. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> and to all of our amazing yeah. patrons on Patreon, you're all fantastic. Thank you for supporting the show. And for everyone watching right now, uh, is Dripping Buckets you, Crystal? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I was like, Mike Fletcher is not here right now. No, and there's no way he's using that many exclamation marks, even if he was That's here. true. A, he wouldn't capitalize an entire word. And B, exactly. he wouldn't use exclamation Unless points. he's yeah. masquerading as Crystal. Ooh. Yeah, unless he's making fun of me. That would or be something. Or Connor. Yeah. Or Connor, that's true. Yeah, if he's making fun of me or Connor, then he'll do it. But otherwise, <laughs> no. they're All like right. sarcastic exclamation marks. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to ask all of you. Uh, I'll start with you, Crystal. Um, oh, again, let's. I just want to hear from you. Like you're in the hot you, seat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what you've been working on and how is life lately? Oh, I'm. Uh, so it's all your fault. Uh, I finally dove into my own mushroom project. Your um, dragon mushroom. Your mushroom dragon. Yeah, it's not mushroom dragon dragons. Mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, both of the all of the above. <laughs> yeah, both all, all the above. Of it's like. Um, prohibition except instead of alcohol it's magic that's being prohibited but they get magic from um a new mushroom that i've invented entirely for the purpose of fantasy um and it gives them like it has kind of like a normal mushroom party drug effect where it makes them really chill and um overly uh, affectionate with each other let's put it that way <laughs> Um, but when you're really good at it, you can do things like altering other people's consciousness and stuff. So it's like a little bit dangerous. Ooh. So it's a little bit organized crime and a little bit uh, psychedelic. Um, but and then also there's something about the dragons that's going to be I'm going to figure out how to reveal it without info dumping. That's the hardest part of drafting. <laughs> but yeah, Always so <laughs> there's two kinds of dragons and one of them is like um a pest like a possum or a raccoon or a coyote or a dragon like it's it's the bane of a farmer's existence like just like a dragon to... rifling through your garbage and you yeah like, Fuck off. <laughs> Throw stones exactly. At it. exactly like the the first the first scene with a dragon and it, it's like in in the alley between the buildings and the main character is like watching it not on the walls and like just generally be really freaking weird. It's like, God, I hate dragons so much. <laughs> and it's really fun to just like hit them at a different angle. And then there's like other dormant, eldritch, dangerous dragons too. Um, and yeah, so it's it's entirely your fault and also Ryan's fault for like putting inspirations in my head at the same time and breeding I'm this terrific plus dragons yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly plus prohibition because the 1920s are fun right yeah i'm all for that i'm all Art for that deco Christa. psychedelic dragons yeah, yeah. and not? you have a nice little notebook for that project specifically uh yes i do but I, actually i don't think i have it downstairs i think it's upstairs i should have I'm not I think you posted yeah, it on, on Twitter cool and then and then like yeah. yeah and then blamed me and Ryan which I'm yep. I'm happy to take that blame so <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> You're also I'd just like to reiterate my earlier offer for beta reading you know just whatever just throwing it yeah. out there if you need yeah, one yeah. I don't know yeah. I don't know whatever <laughs> she's a good I'm one sorry. she just beta read for me yeah <laughs> yeah I believe it. Yeah, yeah, you can ask Greta if you actually want me to beta read for you. Because Greta knows all I do is just put comments like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. That's what. That's, that's how Crystal beta reads. That's yeah. how Crystal beta reads. My that's stuff. my favorite too. It's like I, I left Adrian a couple of comments and then DM'd him like, "In case you haven't seen this gift, this is the one that I'm re referencing on page yeah. 178 or whatever." Like, no, my favorites like, were were your this. were your were your comments that were just like escalating, and you're just like, "Oh no, you didn't." Oh shit, yeah. you did. Oh no. Oh no. All caps. And it's just like escalating all the time. I love it. It's, so like, it's like you're live tweeting your reaction. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Directly yeah, yeah, yeah. at the author. It's so fun. It is fun. And Crystal, if you need a, a, a psychedelic sensitivity reader for that project, I'm there for absolutely you. gonna hit you yeah, up. Yeah, I can't help you with that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I got you covered there. Don't worry, girl. <laughs> and uh, Jenny, how are you doing? How's everything going? Because I think right now you are, what are you going through edits for Relentless Legion? Yeah, I actually just sent off the final like proof proofreading pass. Um, my final proofreading Ooh. pass. They'll continue to proofread it themselves. But um, so it's kind of out of my court now. Other than you know, we'll do cover and marketing and all that fun stuff. But um, I'm pretty much done. So Ooh. yay! That must be nice. really exciting. Yeah, it's it's a load off. I was talking to my agent about like, oh, like what are we gonna do next? Because I'm kind of just in the stage of like deciding whatever I want to do. And I'm like, oh, wow, like I can just not do anything for a couple months. So I'm going to not do anything for a couple months. So, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, much where so, I'm at. Like, yeah, Crystal, Crystal and MJ kind of yeah. set me up for this. They're like, don't force anything. And yeah. after after Mushroom Blues came out, it's Your like brain will be mashed potatoes. Yeah, it's been almost <laughs> yeah. a month exactly. And it very much yeah. was mashed potatoes for a yeah. while. And I've just been like catching up on reading and shows and it's been really nice. Like, it's been actually so good. Yeah. And yeah. video games for me. Like I've been games, yeah. so bad lately. Like I had taken an entire star an entire month to play Starfield. So like got that right. one covered. Yeah. Like, there's so and many on other brand. ones that <laughs> Yeah, we started Baldur's Gate over the weekend. And that's I was literally really fun, just gonna so. ask, have you started VG? Okay, okay, okay. What what's your tab? Like who's your who's your avatar? What'd you what'd you build? Um, I, I am so. just like a basic bitch warrior, like the <laughs> most okay. basic boring I'm trying to play shit storm ever. from the X Men. <laughs> it's all the okay. stuff, like all the spell management, I can't deal with it. I just want to hit things with a sword really hard. So like, but it's That's fun fair. because I'm that. playing with my husband. So it's like his character, my character, and then we can each control one of the NPCs. Okay. So I can get to play another class as well, kind of like when we're in battle. So it's, it's fun for that. And just for role playing reasons. Nice. And, so you yeah, got like your own, like you got like your own, like KOTOR style, like party. Yeah. Where you there's... can have like all the different classes and everything like that. Or Mass Effect. Yeah. We'll go with Mass Effect because I know, <laughs> you know. Jenny and MJ are big yeah. fans of that, but a little bit, yeah. a little bit, <laughs> just a tiny bit. I don't know, just a tiny bit. Whatever, <laughs> you know. Jenny doesn't work for Casey Hudson or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Genevieve, what about you? Uh, I, I truthfully am still recovering, <laughs> like yeah. more than one month later. That. Um, I, I, I'm just honestly just at this point trying to work on things that will make me happy. Um, like in my heart even though I have yeah. one more book to fulfill my contract, which I'm grateful to have a contract, but mm -hmm. that means that your publisher has to approve something that you write. And my brain is just like, what if you just didn't do that and instead that, just though. did something that makes the brain feel good? And I'm like, what? It's like, what is I, that like? Let me, let me satisfy like my wishes. The brain's allowed heart. to feel good. What? <laughs> I feel that though, like that's exactly oh, like publishing right. gives a I fuck about that, MJ. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's exactly why I pivoted into working on Frankie because it's like a pivot out of the big chunky heavy series that I've been working on, um, and it's like wait, is that the working name for your dragon mushroom thing? No, uh, that's the name of the main character. Um, oh, okay. Uh, the the name. I was is like, who's Frankie? Because the... you didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just my shorthand. Uh, okay. Yeah, so like I, I pivoted out of the big series that I was working on just because it's like I, I really appreciate having the opportunity to do it, but that series is heavy and I need like something more fun. So obviously, organized crime is way more fun, right? <laughs> but so yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I understand that Genevieve and I, I definitely think that it's really valuable to be honest about it um, mm -hmm. as writers with platforms where it's like this shit took me by surprise with the first book and so it was really hard to write the second book but after the second book and watching other people say that like yeah this is just the thing you go through with every book it was like oh okay well if I'm just gonna go through it I'll just go write something fun then <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but then publishers don't always necessarily want. Yeah, that's. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. What are they going to do? Make you write? Change you to your desk to write the other? I mean, if you have a contract. <laughs> He's yes. like, possibly though. He's yeah. like, we're laughing, but. Uh, <laughs> <maybe>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I know that I'll find my groove uh, with something yeah. that they actually want. It's just the the hard part for me has been that, like, in my heart. I have always been a series girly. The Witch's Heart was a fluke. Like that was originally part of a series that I was writing in high school, weirdly enough. 
But like my publisher is like, no, we want standalones. And I'm like, but, but, <laughs> oh, no. but I want to work on a big chunky series. Like um, I, I, I've been having this like weird, like nostalgia for like those, you know, pocket paperbacks, like the mass market paperbacks, mass market paperbacks. that I grew up on. And yeah. I'm just like, oh no, I just want to write some chunkers. I don't know. So that's about yeah. where I'm at. But um, yeah, no, I know I'll get super into the thing I'm working on for them. It's just taken a while. You just take <laughs> burnout. <laughs> just gotta let your brain attach to it, which exactly. no, no, it doesn't exactly. always like want a mushroom. To you want it to. Like, yeah. and, we're, and we're full circle. Uh, yeah. we're we're it back, back to the mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> you got this crystal you got this yeah but I, but like i think it's it's pretty i don't know like being a debut author i think the podcast kind of set me up really well to hear all these different authors experiences yeah to kind of know like there are so many more pitfalls that i could have fallen into as a debut yeah. author were it not for the fact that i did this podcast or I became friends with with people like you you know and like crystal and mj know a lot about like <laughs> we all got the the trauma shit. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah but at the same time you know like like some people are like oh like your your book tour went super well blah blah, blah. and I was like yeah and I was freaking the fuck out behind the scenes like 90% <laughs> right. of the time <laughs> you're like great because I blacked yeah. out and I remember like none of it yeah, uh, yeah. that was, that was so, me like on the summer yeah she's like I was what like, she sent me to comic on i'm so ah. and then like i just went back to my hotel room each night like oh my god i'm a comic what the fuck <laughs> just happened to me <laughs> like what happened just completely today? draining like completely draining any extroversion extroverted like energy that yeah. you yeah. have You're no like, spoons not a single spent. spoon to be found it was, yeah. it was amazing, but negative I was spoons. out of negative spoons. Oh, no. <laughs> Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con was actually the week before The Weaver and the Witch Queen came out. So it was no. Comic-Con, no. home for two days, book tour. Uh, um, which, I mean, like, all of it was no. amazing. Like, I yeah, don't want to sound, I don't want to sound, for people listening at home, I don't want to sound negative about, like, going to Comic-Con and then having a book right. contract. You're allowed and, like, to all be this stressed stuff, out. But, like, Even an extrovert it's a lot. that it's a, a lot. Pile. I'm an introvert. <laughs> So I'm just like, I would just like to go back to live under my little mushroom in the forest. And we're back to mushrooms again. No, Genevieve, yeah. you're just like, I just want to go like, like, read, you know, live, live in a books. tent in Iceland. Read <laughs> my like... books, buy my books. Please stop looking at me, though. I don't know why you feel please, like you're Please buy, but do not read. <laughs> stop oh making eye contact with me. I wasn't here for it. You're here for them. Admit it. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> Just, just cut like a mask out of the cover of our books and like wear it oh at our event, and then no one has to look at us. Right? And then, and then I mean, that would almost work, work for my book. Say, <laughs> already like halfway. There. I think we're onto something here, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I can just poke holes in the in the O's on on mushroom, and I got it. There you go. Oh, I'm oh good. it'll be like those uh, 2000 New Year's glasses for you. Wait, can I? Can I? I'm gonna go get something. We made this for my for my younger okay. son's birthday. It's the caterpillar from the very hungry caterpillar because he's like uh -huh. a like a little a little cutie fatty boy who just likes to eat a lot so he did that for his birthday but i'm gonna go Relatable. get this mask and we're gonna have a good time oh my god i feel, I I feel like i'm i'm a cutie fatty boy who likes to eat a lot trapped in some grown woman's body <laughs> preach <laughs> what, a mood. what a mood oh, oh my god there, there you go. go isn't Love that it. perfect that yeah. is perfect I'll just bring this to Worldcon. I'll bring this to Worldcon, and everyone will come up and be like, "I'm a very hungry caterpillar. Just give me <laughs> mushrooms and money. <laughs> give, me a, <laughs> give me a snack, and money, <laughs> mushrooms and money. Give me psychedelics and and funds, and I will be fine. <laughs> and snacks. We can't forget this. And that's yeah, and how snacks. Adrian got kicked out of Scotland. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is probably like the most likely way I'll get kicked out of Scotland. But I have a UK passport, so fucking give it a try. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Greta, how are you doing? You you just gave something to to MJ to, to beta read. So how's that? Yeah, going? yeah. So I've got something else uh, on submission that I can't really talk about yet. But I did just trade little work in progress babies with MJ. Uh, God, I don't even know how to describe this book, MJ. It's like if Agent Carter was quest fantasy. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so it's got like a 1940s like, vibe. Like, like 40s yes. sort of portal fantasy. Yeah. Like powerful group of girl like, group former friends guys. have to go out and 
solve a 10 year old murder and also maybe save the world former friend oh. portal fantasy so yeah. right? literally it's like a, gr- a friend group of of like a women mj, and MJ in their 30s when, like you don't see yeah. that very often yeah. mj when you described I, it to me it. at first you didn't tell me anything about fantasy and it sounded like a contemporary high school reunion and then it became very <laughs> fantasy <laughs> And then I was like, oh, but also there's a demon. And he was there's like, there's like oh, a there's like a crap. there's like a magic school. And I'm like, you didn't say any of that at the beginning. <laughs> I've tried my best. There's a but it was a I fun book to write. Right. Cover copy for publishers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm all for it. Yeah, it's been fun. I was uh Rewatching Good Omens as I was drafting the book because kind of like that book, it has funny footnotes. So I was trying mm. to like get the voice down. So I'm like, ah, footnotes. Yes, <laughs> I'm doing this. <laughs> so good. So good. Oh my yeah. god, I love it. MJ, what about you? You've been working on a lot of stuff lately. Oh my god. I well, so before much. before work got crazy, but <laughs> yeah. Well, now now day job is eating my soul. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, um, no, I have, I mean, gosh, I have two projects out on submission right now. So yeah, fingers crossed. Oh, this... <laughs> like, That's so stressful. I, know. I don't like it. <laughs> like, at this point, well, they've, well, whatever. I, I, Adrian is aware. I'm like completely unfazed by anything publishing these days. I am... <laughs> As we're watching other friends like go through shit and MJ's like, they'll get there. They'll get there no. one day. They'll, like, they'll oh. get beaten to a pulp eventually. And they'll stop <laughs> feeling. Uh- <laughs> so this is going to be uh, a drinking game, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Maybe it is- should be. Yeah, but no, the, the most recent one, like the one I just traded with Greta, is kind of like horror adjacent, which is very new for me. Mm. Um, and it's also kind of contemporary, which is also new for me. And it's written in first person, single POV, which is also new for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just testing out a whole bunch of new shit. Wait, right now, it's but... first person, but is it present tense or past tense? <laughs> it is what I don't even remember, Greta. Do you remember? <laughs> I don't even remember I think either. It's past. I, I, I think, think it's past. past. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like if it was present, that would have been more of a choice, and you would have remembered deciding to do that. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, especially because I'm usually like close third person past. Um, but yeah, even, no, even nowadays, fun. even nowadays, like first person is a choice. I'm like, come on. people. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's like, some oh, there's some oh, readers. Oh, I, there's some people that I know, some bloggers who are like, I don't like first person. And I'm like, well, you would have hated growing up any time before like the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the Although thing, I, like, I, people I, don't I, read them and that's fine. But yeah. like, I, I kind of like know. a first-person shooter video game. Like, I guess I don't like first-person in a video game. That's a valid what, decision. What yeah. What I never like about like if if a first-person stands out to me as like a thing that I'm not enjoying, it's because like if your eye scans the page and you just see I I I I, oh. and it's just like <laughs> littered across the entire page like fifty times on a six by nine, it's like. Yeah, no, this isn't this isn't gonna float yeah. with me because I, I this think character like, is so self centered. Jesus, <laughs> right? Well, I think you really need to nail voice. If you're yeah, exactly. To carry out yeah. first person. Yeah, that's yeah. the part that always like draws me out is when I don't know. Like, I am one of those people where I would say like I dislike first person. Yeah, but I have read books where I like first person, and I can't really put words to why. But it's just I feel like I'm like intruding on their thoughts. It's like well, I want you're like in, you're so close in yeah. the person's head. I feel like you right. can have an unlikable main character, but you have to kind of really be able to connect with what well, I don't know. Maybe it's just you really have to connect with the voice more if it's first person. <gasps> maybe that's the secret. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but yeah. Well, I feel like there's also a habit to filter more where it's like, I saw this and um, I could see that she was wearing this and I did this instead of like, right, letting just it saying flow. she was wearing this. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. And so that like that, to me personally, that becomes almost a barrier in my investment where it's like, I know you saw it. That's why you're telling me the story. Can you just get out of the way and tell me the story? And that's that's what will kick me out fastest. Um, but even as I say that, um, <laughs> Mushroom Dragons is first person, 
too and it's like my first big first person project so it's like i'm aware of this pet peeve even as i'm doing it and i catch right. myself doing it and then i go oh you simple bitch and i'm like cross it over. <laughs> that's what <laughs> the whole for your first draft yeah, can be as yeah, yeah. 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 as you want it to be I Guess but that so. that was something that I, that was something that happened a lot during Mushroom Blues because it's like the yeah. the main character Henrietta, um, it was just like she was just over over describing shit and it's like I know she's mm -hmm. a detective and everything like that, and that's something that actually bothers me sometimes about detective fiction, yeah, and like noir and that kind of stuff is like they see a person and they're like, okay, here's like my checklist of like 14 things of this person. It's like her <laughs> bosoms were plump and she was, was wearing a red say, dress. Wait, and is the person blah, blah. a female? And like, <laughs> the first thing we're going <laughs> to talk always. about is nipples. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's like her nipples were erect and she wore red heels and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, like 50% of it is, is extraneous detail. Yeah. And the, the stuff that actually can matter, you can, tie it into it in a much more interesting way as opposed to like yeah. her hair was done Just this listing. way and her, this was her clothes yeah. and blah 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 which is like so much of detective fiction especially from like the 20th century does yeah. that so much and it becomes like a list yeah like straight up straight story. up like my yeah. my friend patricia jackson calls it the laundry list she's like your <laughs> laundry listing like get that shit get that shit out of here you know yeah. if it's not relevant then just just leave it out you know but as it went on i was like okay what can i include more of and that's where I was like, I'm going to dive deeper into this, that's, like kind of like the senses. And I was like, I'm going to make you smell shit and feel shit. And it's yeah. going to be icky and weird. And, and there's like <laughs> with all the mushrooms and mold and everything, it worked really well. Yeah. But I can see yeah, that's where you can get the world how building. difficult. Yeah, exactly. But like I can see how how easy it is for a reader to get turned off by that. Yeah. And I haven't experienced it too much except in in like older detective fiction it's not really something that i can consciously be like that's a clear example of it at least not in fantasy or like sci-fi but yeah awkward pause, yeah, awkward, <laughs> pause. awkward pause. yeah we're, we're okay. all considering how wise you are yeah You're <laughs> i read i wrote one book don't <laughs> don't don't give me that um okay i'm just oh thanks tom tom bruno yeah. go check out his books fantastic the Kamara trilogy and what is it down below beyond it's fantastic and oh, i just uh, appreciate everyone that's watching right now there's like 120 people watching right now so hello oh, wow. everybody how y'all doing hello everybody um <laughs> thank you yeah <laughs> you guys can't see that but i can i know that's um, i'm like i hope people are here i don't know Maybe we're just talking to ourselves either way it's still fun it's very good company even if there's yeah. nobody else here right. it's, like, it's like girls night in a very crowded bar well, it's like our pandemic chats we used to do over Zoom yeah. as the debut author group. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, MJ, I want to toss out to you. What has been we one of your favorite... Jenny what she's working on. We already asked Have Jenny. Have we asked Jenny? Yeah. Did we? Yeah. She's working on yeah, Relentless Legion. Oh, she just handed in Relentless Legion. Oh, that's right. That's right. We started yeah. there. Okay. I was like... I was hoping to hear a secret of what else you were working Connor, that is the most diva arrival ever. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I've arrived. I'm just imagining you and like fishnets just saying like, I have arrived. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, MJ, I wanted to toss it out to you. Uh, if you, because you've been doing this with me for a little over a year. Uh, if you could tell me some of like the big lessons that you've learned and we can just use that as like a jumping off point to talk about more stuff. Ooh, Okay. Big lessons that I've learned. One, caffeinate before the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's like 9 p.m. It's like... <laughs> Literally, I'm drinking iced tea right now. <laughs> I get You're sleepy. I, love you. Like, you, I know, and then I'll be up until one in the morning, but it's okay. I'll just get some work done. Because uh, <laughs> I'm Felt. Grandma MJ. I get sleepy. <laughs> Grandma Mallory. Grandma Mallory just having a snooze. I get tired was because I really do. And then I like have trouble following. Like when we're actually interviewing somebody, sometimes I like that's when I really struggle with like transitioning into a new question is if I'm like a little tired. I'm like not on my A game. Um and it makes it harder. So yeah, that, but literally that's one of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, really, probably I mean, I've said this before, but it's it's really just that even no matter how I don't know, successful, famous, whatever, uh, an author is. <laughs> they are delightful and wonderful and kind like every single guest we've had on the show including like John, like the big name like christopher paolini was like super chill and kind jim butcher super nice and fun martha wells right like these people who i'm like starstruck 
um are just like the coolest chillest humans um and also both <laughs> this is like both inspiring and not inspiring but like they'll have like doubts or whatever right well they'll be like oh I don't, yeah i don't know if i can do a master class and it's like are you have you seen you like yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you can't do a master class i sure as shit shouldn't have done one like yeah we sure as fuck shouldn't be hosting master <laughs> right literally so it's like it's kind of validating because it's like oh the imposter syndrome never goes away but then it's yeah because right. it's like oh the the imposter syndrome never goes away <laughs> yeah that I, it's we, kind of I, found, I i found the same thing with dripping bucket like even we've only just started and we had like anna smith spark on um and like she was talking about how as she was getting started she was like i'm not qualified to write books and she's like she's got like this list of like md bachelor PD, <laughs> uh, phd in history and it was and it's like ma'am you're 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 very qualified you, you you're doing great like it's it's great you can do all then, the things <laughs> yeah. and, and so it's like oh that's comforting and then also oh then I'm really underqualified if, if that's the case. It's like, yeah, we're all just people. We're all just people who don't know what the hell we're doing. It's great. Just I mean, cool I don't know if I don't know if anybody here has like like I studied English literature, but that was just like my undergrad. I don't know if anyone has actually studied specifically like creative writing or anything along those lines. Like nope. Genevieve, you studied you studied, mm -hmm. but like you didn't study writing in particular. No, I You're... I studied history, so I studied yeah. like the things that I'm writing about, but I didn't That's, study. That counts yeah. though. Like, <laughs> I I slow. reference you all the time, not like by name. Maybe I will if you're okay with whatever, because people would know who you are. <laughs> but like when I'm talking, because I do talks at high schools and stuff sometimes, because I love to talk about like writing to the English classes. It's like my favorite thing. Um, and like I'll when they're asking like what majors they should do i'll be like well you don't have to have a major in creative writing you don't have to get an mfa like you can but it's not required you can go you know whatever a couple different routes blah 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 and then i talk about like you know what i've done which is like i have a degree in you know communication and marketing which is what i do for my day job so it's helpful which for is me also when... very applicable to being <laughs> an author it and that's yeah. the thing it's applicable to being an author but also <laughs> it's why i have a roof over my head right now you know what i mean like, yeah. <laughs> i make like you know part-time college job money from my books i don't make real money from them yet um but then also i talk about you know if you want to write something you know like fantasy or historical fiction or whatever i have a friend that majored in history and like you know it's indirectly related but it's still very much helpful for for her and the work that she yeah. does so i, I like i have a friend you. who writes about mushrooms <laughs> and he took psychedelics in his 20s <laughs> you know adrian i probably won't tell the kids that one <laughs> no offense but i was in hey guys you want to be inspired that'll get me uninvited from all the high school <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was, I, think say, it's, I was um, an international ahead, studies major, and that was really like Ooh. tangentially helpful to all the world building nonsense yeah. that fantasy writers do. So, oh, that's I can a good totally one. see that. Yeah. yeah, and it can also apply as a business degree, so you can still like get regular jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I was just gonna ask, what was your what was your like dream like when you? Because like I have some friends that did international relations, and they wanted to go into like international law, right? Like a couple of them are lawyers now and stuff. Just like what was your original thought with it? I, I think know. my original thought was I wanted to work for the State Department, not realizing that going to like some farm college in Wisconsin really was not like <laughs> it's not the same as like not the Yale stuff for them. <laughs> You walk in the room with confidence. Classism, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that comment, Tom. I do have my own things. <laughs> oh yeah, Connor. This is is this our slogan for like 2025? <laughs> Get the kids on mushrooms. It's like the opposite of dare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like it's this like is like, what like dare actually a dare to experiment <laughs> dare to experiment kids. Oh my god, this is like going to be like the anti Reagan like say no to drugs kind of, <laughs> kind of vibe. Crystal, I know you're on board with me. You're writing a book about I, the prohibition. So. so I'm so on board. Counterculture Let's do is this. like my jam. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's like a single book that I will write that won't have some aspect of counterculture yeah. in it because it's just too it's just too fun, you know. Yeah. It's like Yeah, and I think it like it always has such an interesting thing to say about the zeitgeist of the time. Um, where the things that 
the, the taboos that we decide collectively um, are often just so ridiculous. And, and so the lengths that people will go to, um, my interest comes from like some of, some of the, the, the drive to kick against is like for really altruistic reasons where it's like some of these people are, are genuinely trying to help people, like especially talking about the Reagan era, like in the Nixon era where there was some really interesting therapeutic things happening with psychedelics and then it all went away. And then there's another bad actor population that wants it because they want their party drugs. And mm -hmm. I, I find the collision of those two things in any counterculture movement so fascinating and then also how governments respond usually really badly <laughs> yeah it's like oh that's that's the good story juice governments right there like, badly. Yeah. Never. I mean, like I yeah like like my 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 years in berlin really showed yeah. me how like berlin is just this like microcosm within germany like everyone in germany is just like we don't talk about berlin you know? <laughs> or like we don't care about berlin you know it's like the like the black sheep even though it's the capital fucking city is it is it be is it because of um the wall and like the the division of communism or is it more it's more what happened after that obviously it was like yeah it was very it was very separated yeah because of the cold war and because of the division between the soviets and, and the allies but the wall just kind of like represented what Berlin became. And it's like when the wall went down, like I met people who were like in their forties and they were like, yeah, like I grew up in, in the eighties and then was like a yeah. teenager in my twenties in the 1990s. And they were like, it was fucking wild, you know? Yeah. Like, they're, <laughs> like all the, all these, like all these decommissioned spaces and stuff like that. Like I went to a rave once in a, in a, in a bunker. Um, and you would. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i would uh so i went to a rave once in a, in a bunker and i met someone there and he was like this is nothing compared to the 90s 90s was crazy <laughs> it's and so cool like, now we obey laws this <laughs> no he's like yeah. he's like you have no idea no idea <laughs> and it's like every drug offense. tell me tell me i want the idea i need it yeah I need it. but he was like he was like this is tame you know like this is so fucking like vanilla compared to what we did in the 90s and, and all those people it's like they're still living in berlin and they're still kind yeah. of like you know really in that mindset and it's like i've never met a people who partied so hard in my entire <laughs> life except for the fact that they work like nine to five throughout the whole week you know yeah they're like go on monday in a suit and tie to your office job and then it's friday night and you go out and at fucking 2 a.m and yeah. you don't come back until like sunday night literally <laughs> you're in like the same club for like more than 48 fucking hours you know and it's like <laughs> yeah i was gonna I mean, say <laughs> these I people literally like goals, they live they live they live on like then... cocaine and mdma for like a straight 48 hours and it's just <laughs> That's insane. What I, mean. I was gonna say goals but then also i had to be real with myself where it's like kind of no kind of late and like i'm a tea now. and a blankie with a book <laughs> kind of bitch i know yeah. that <laughs> And these people, they're just like, work hard, play hard, and just like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> but I like, it was so cool to experience that in Berlin and then be able to like start applying that stuff to my to my writing yeah. and to really be able to like explore the counterculture kind of vibe. Cause it's like the government in Germany kind of like lets Berlin exist in this, in this microcosm, you know? They're like, yes, and... sorry, babe, we didn't have your back. So like, yeah, okay, we'll just. <laughs> Just like we'll gentle just petting to like make you yeah. feel better <laughs> as a city. They're like the spoiled but, child where the parents feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, breaking breaking the trauma cycle. Is, it, and is this like a is this like a post divorce child? Yeah, is that exactly. What is? That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, but maybe. <laughs> but I think I think that's the coolest thing about writing is that like we can have these experiences or even just like experience them through reading or watching things or kind of like experiencing it secondhand through through other people and just like imbuing it into stories and that's what i love that's what i've absolutely loved about doing this podcast is hearing all the stories that these people have of their lives everything that they've gone through all of you and like every guest that we've ever had on this show and then the way that they're able to kind of like channel that into this thing that is writing 
to me is like a miracle of creativity, you know? Cause there's so many, like MJ and I talk about all the time. It's like, there's so many people who say, I want to write a book and then they never fucking do it, you <laughs> yeah. know? And, and I've been talking to friends like since Mushroom Blues came out and they're like, you actually did it. And I was like, yeah, cause I said I wanted to do it. And they're like, I know so yeah. many people. One friend, he's like, I have like five friends who are all English lit majors, including you. And out of the five, you're the only one who's ever actually done the thing and written <laughs> a book. And all the others keep saying that they want to write a book, you know? So yeah. it's like, it's one thing to even like have these experiences. It's enough to sit your ass down and just like put them onto paper and edit it to the point that it's yeah. like readable and enjoyable for people to, to actually pick up and consume. But I don't know. I just want to toss it out to all of you about like this, like this just creative madness that we endeavor <laughs> as like professionals. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like a, it's like a sickness a little bit. Cause I can't not, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can't not like I will have like I'll be in between projects or whatever or like really busy at work for a couple weeks or blah 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 and then I'll be like why am I feeling like such a bitch lately <laughs> like what is wrong with me right now and then I'll be like oh I haven't written anything in 10 days or whatever like, in between projects is the bad place Yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's the worst. People are like, oh, I'm... "Oh, relax," and like some people are able to, and I love that for them. I, uh, I cannot. <laughs> I'm so I sorry. Have four projects at a time, because then I'm I have so... one that I'm outlining, one yeah. that I'm drafting, one that's with beta readers, one that I'm editing, right? And then I can just kind of like, beep, pa, boop, pa, as my ADHD like fires in different directions, pa. and then I'm always got something, and I don't have to be a bitch. <laughs> See, like my my hyperfixation is that like. It goes like you can only focus on one thing at a time, and then <laughs> yeah, like it, my brain always needs a hyper like something to hyper focus on. So it's like, oh no, hyper focus, no hyper focus. Oh, we don't got a hyper focus, hyper focus. Right. Depression. Shall we perish? <laughs> like yeah. must latch on to something to obsess over. Yeah. Or brain is in the bad place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, like yes. the same but, way. But I, like, I have a hard time juggling multiple things, so I give you major no. credit for being able to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it's crazy. Just my mental illness manifesting in a different way. So <laughs> I don't know if it deserves credit. <laughs> Greta, you were going to say something? Oh, I was going to say in the same way that I can't just like sit and watch a movie anymore without like also cleaning the house or knitting. Like I just always yeah. need to be doing something because otherwise, I don't know, my my brain just explodes. <laughs> it's, it's like the old, like that's basically why I picked up knitting, right? So I could have something yeah. to do. So I have an excuse to watch TV. It's like that meme that's like, yeah. I wonder if there's a way that I could relax that would be more productive. And like that's me. Like that's me knitting miss, and watching TV. I miss knitting. I haven't done that in a while because I've been writing instead, and that makes me crazy. But also, not writing makes me crazy. So I don't know. I just this there's just no me. winning. There's no winning. Yeah, I'm like MJ, where I get to be pretty cranky if I'm not doing something creative. Um, it's been much less of a problem since I started my current day job though like yeah when i was in my previous day job just doing like marketing videos and stuff it was like i had to write all the time like yeah. constant like i would get up at five in the morning i would write at starbucks until i went to work i would go home and write all night like i had to have that creative outlet and now that i get to have a creative outlet in my day job i can actually relax at night sometimes <laughs> because no, I, but like, it's, I got it's cool because it's like you you're <laughs> you're writing as your day job as well so it's kind of like you're kind of you're like facilitating your creativity and like that writing mindset even though the the, the video game is like a very specific world and project mm -hmm. so maybe like for you has it been kind of like that just stimulates you and gets you in the mindset to write like your fiction and the two yeah, well, kind of like work in symbiosis as opposed to yeah, they're very different and i've looked out as far as stages because like when i started the day job it was like the brand new ip nothing like the video game didn't exist so there was a lot of world building a lot of coming up with characters a lot of just developing stuff and i was drafting at the same time as that for my novels which is a very different thing drafting and editing different things and then slowly now i've like been through that process and now we're actually doing the writing bit of the video game and i'm oh, doing cool. like proofreading passes and marketing and okay. stuff for like the novel stuff so it's kind of like balanced nicely and yeah. then i'm like definitely thinking like i've got a bunch of ideas of what i want to write next and i want to like continue writing shorts for the divide series and stuff like that but like 
it's nice to just be able to be like, I'm going to focus a little more on the day job stuff as far as like just digging into that. Cause I'm like actually writing scripts now and like developing, like writing characters speaking to each other. And it's yes, like getting to the point it. of like really making this like dialogue trees. It's so fun. It's crazy. That sounds really there, exciting. Have there been any voice actors yet? Or is that, is that stage not happened yet? We're casting like in the process of casting. Um, we have a like, so we have a performance director and she will record lines and then they use a tool called Respeecher that will like change the pitch and tonality of her voice to sound like different people. And it works shockingly well. Wow. So like we've had like recorded lines in that way, but we haven't like really other than the casting scripts that we wrote to do the casting. We haven't really mm -hmm. like heard many lines from out of actors yet, but it's definitely it's getting to that point because we have like shoots coming up in not the too far future so <laughs> yeah. i'm so excited about that oh my God, i love so uh, yeah cool. i love that there's like ways because for me doing sff addicts has been the perfect way to kind of like stimulate my creativity it's like i spend all day with with like toddlers yeah and so <laughs> I'm, I'm just like what that doesn't sap all your energy or anything does it <laughs> no but it's like i have oh, to man. like i have to but there's yeah, also like, like it takes so i have to dumb my, i have to energy. dumb my Dumb my brain down and it's yeah. actually tasking to kind of like kind of like put yourself into the mindset of a child and being like it, it it's both overstimulating and understimulating yeah at the yeah, same yeah, time exactly. in this most horrific of <laughs> overlaps where it's like <laughs> this is taking like this so fucked up venn diagram it doesn't make yeah sense. yeah but yeah but like the, the podcast the podcast has been because MJ, it's like you're tired for for some of the podcasts. I'm like I'm jazzed as shit. Like yeah. I'm just ready to go. Because every Talking time that we record, for the yeah, first exactly. Time to That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I'm like I've been having such simple conversations, talking about like this is a dog, rough, rough, and now like I get to have like an adult red. conversation. Nobody, that one's green. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But now, like at least my my conversations with my oldest son are getting a little more interesting. But he just like, you know, like lost his mind the other day when he found out that that uh, all mammals have or like most I'm pretty sure all mammals have like tongues. And, and he's just like, they have tongues. And he's like, tiger has tongue. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, a monkey has a tongue. And I'm like, yeah, dude. And so it's like, he's listing <laughs> off And you're like, animals. oh no, we're going to go through yeah. all the animals. <laughs> it was deep. And it was just before bed. He always has his deepest questions before oh, yeah. bed. That's yeah. a little bit of procrastinating. Um, yeah. Right? But, like, he's like, oh, if I keep asking dad questions, I won't have to I won't have to sleep. sleep. Exactly. Yeah. Which like as a grown ass adult that does bedtime procrastination to myself, uh, yeah. I really can't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> that is like that is like the child equivalent of like staring at a blue screen for like an hour before you want to go yeah. to bed. But yeah. I found that the podcast has been like the perfect way to stimulate my creativity and my writing because like illustration takes like a completely different part of my brain. Tattooing took a completely different part of my brain. But podcasting is like, I hear all these conversations and like most of the time I'll come out of a recording and then I'll just immediately go write. Cause I'm like, I'm just yeah. way too inspired by this really cool person that we just talked to. And I've mentioned a lot of times before how I started this podcast kind of selfishly of like, I just want to like pick people's brains. Like I want, I want to create a professional ambiance and I want to invite on very like admirable it's writers and people so who I respect. It's so brilliant though. Cause like when you're starting out writing, how many of us, I like literally was like sitting watching, like maybe I'm just a dork, what oh, I am a dork, but maybe I'm just like a loser. But like I would sit and I would like see Twitter conversations, like interactions yep. between like published That's... authors and be like, I want to play. Uh, and <laughs> or just, just like naive little Mallory, just like Let yeah, me in. like I want to be able Let to ask in. you questions and learn from you. And yeah. like Adrian was just like, I'm gonna find a way to like make it legit yeah. that I can do that. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, like, I came into the podcast knowing, like, okay, I want to talk to to authors, and like you said before, like authors are super chill people, and we're all really nerdy because we write science fiction and fantasy, so. For the most part, we're all super down to talk about this kind of stuff. This is my <laughs> advice for anyone out there who's like, you know, a beginning writer. And I'm not going to say aspiring because it's like, if, if you're writing, you're a writer. You're writing. Yeah. 
But but if you want to break you, into the industry, yeah, if yeah. you want to break into the industry, it's like it doesn't have to be a podcast, but just figure and out or way. learn how to finish a book, which is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you want to learn, if you want to learn from other people, obviously you yeah. can listen to podcasts as like a resource or booktube channels or whatever. Um, but also like get into the community and befriend authors, talk to them, be like, you know, like I can't even remember how Crystal and I first got in touch, but we just bonded over Anthony Bourdain and Michael Pollan. Yeah. And basically like our, 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 you know, friendship just blossomed from there. But, you know, it, it, I didn't come into this being like, <laughs> yeah, me neither. I have no idea. I have no idea. But I came into this not being like, I have any qualifications. I'm like, I just like started at a book blog, like, a month earlier and now i'm going to start a podcast and then like i have a first... yeti mic and a dream yeah. <laughs> and then my first and then my first guest was like hugh howie you know and then and it's wow. like from there it's from there it's the just like is. yeah just like from there it's like okay we got like sebastian de castell we got andrea stewart we got mm -hmm. anthony ryan but then i started to realize like okay here are all these like amazing traditional authors but then there's also so many amazing self-published authors out there who are doing amazing things like Crystal, you know, like Mike Fletcher, mm -hmm. Rob Hayes, Ryan Cahill, all these amazing people. And it's like the playing field is leveling out so much now that I feel like nobody should feel forced to go in any one direction. It's like you have the resources. Like MJ, you were saying when you started out that you didn't go self pub because you had no fucking idea what information there was to look for no. or where to find it. I didn't I even like, know to look for it, to be yeah. quite honest. I yeah. just started yeah. researching like because I like wrote a book and was like, sweet. Now what? Um, yeah, and I, like, when exactly. I, <laughs> exactly. When I was researching, all the stuff was like, oh, you need an agent. So I was just like, I need an agent. Let's go. <laughs> you know, and so that's the route I ended up going. But yeah. But with, with the podcast, it's like I started out thinking that I wanted to go the traditional route to get an agent and to go through uh, submissions and all that stuff. And then doing the podcast as I was writing my books made me realize, like, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go <laughs> self pub. And I, I'd, I acquired enough information to feel confident enough to do that and so for anyone out there it's like even if you don't want to start a podcast or anything like that like <laughs> just go look for the information and you'll find out the path that works for you it's like i'm just a little fucking punk who always liked working for myself like i've never worked for anyone in my adult life like i was a <laughs> freelance music journalist and then i was a freelance tattoo artist and now i'm a self-published author that's this just my path. Stu just so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but like everyone has their path. I feel like now there's just like all the resources. And it's like my goal when I started this podcast was to publish a book. And here we are at 100 episodes and I published my first book. And so it's like, you know, just it's like, like a beautiful full circle journey. Yeah. 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 Like don't feel, I mean, you can feel intimidated, but there's just, there's enough information out there and there are enough cool fucking people to get to know that you can figure it out you know and it's really cool like hearing from listeners who are like i started writing again because of listening to the podcast oh. or hearing them respond to like certain episodes and being like oh my god that was like blew my mind you know kind of thing and that for me is just amazing because mj you, and i do you, this selfishly you guys do a lot but... of of those where it's like oh damn that that went way deeper than i was expecting and i, yeah. like, I need a minute to recover <laughs> no, but even, even for me and mj even for us yeah yeah like <laughs> they're just things that i don't i don't necessarily like i'm not an expert in but it's cool like being able to talk to jenny about video game writing or talking to greta about plotting because she's super nerdy about that her and mj <laughs> <Yep>. um <laughs> so, or to talk do to do. jenna to talk to Jen about, about like Norse mythology and like and like Norse Norse culture and stuff is super cool. But it's like there are so many people that have their amazing niches that I just I just love being able to like highlight them. And be like, yeah, like Sebastian, come on, talk about swashbuckling. Yeah. And then I have like so many responses from people who are like, I never realized my 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 PO, my MC is a swashbuckler. You know, or like I've never thought about swashbuckling that way. And I'm like, I never thought that anyone would be talking about swashbuckling, which sounds like the most like fantastical fucking term in the world. Like the most so seriously. Word ever. But yeah. like, yeah, that episode was fantastic. I literally stayed up writing until like one in the morning after we recorded that episode because it was like gave me so many ideas and I took so many notes. Yeah. So I just I think like 
for anyone out there who wants to get into writing, who is writing their project, just know that there are people out there who will help you. There are resources out there. MJ and I have a hundred episodes for you to listen to and get a ton of cool information on. And I don't know. I just, I love that. I'm, just, so I'm really thankful. I'm really thankful for the community. <laughs> like this community is fucking awesome. Even though there's like some, some little, like, you know, some little boo-boos and some, yeah, there's Jen with the, with the hearts. Okay. There are shitty people, but the shitty people eventually get called out, which is, out, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's like, if you are a genuine person and if you're, honest about what you do and honest about what you put out there like people are going to be attracted to that not necessarily like sexually or anything like that but they're going to be intellectually and sort of like they're going to be intellectually attracted by that Ooh, book twitter it's like the Ooh la la, your of our brain world. is so, so sexy <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah well whatever MJ. <laughs> i've never been on a dating app so i can't say anything about that to give you shit <laughs> thank you thank you there oh wow connor <laughs> podcast bust a night wow <laughs> you heard it here first folks <laughs> oh my god but i'm done Girls man. Night's going great <laughs> now, greta i'm dying to know Ooh. since since uh, adrian dropped the lore that you're also a like super into plotting yeah are did are you into this the spreadsheets like mj is like she was explaining these book spreadsheets she um, is converting me to the dark side and this yeah. is someone who hates excel with like such a deep passion <laughs> but yeah Got i started another off one. as yeah. um someone who was trying to like write by the seat of their pants uh, jenny uh. <laughs> <laughs> and i sucked at it i could not finish a book that way so i i figured out like no i just have to i have to go all in on the plotting and yeah, as my year, my career has like progressed, I get more and more nitty gritty with the plotting to the point where the book that I just gave to MJ was one that I used Excel to plot out. <laughs> and oh, I'm and a little disappointed in myself. Wonderful. And beautiful. <laughs> and you were like, this is an early stage draft. And I was like, bullshit, I don't believe you. Look how cute it is. Oh my God. It's almost like you found your process. <laughs> MJ, <laughs> MJ did we break? I don't like, we I don't like it when you're not humble. My pants are ass could never. What is this about spreadsheets? I know. No, what? Oh so what? <laughs> oh my god. I draft. I draft. I draft. But I let me Excel. color code anything, and I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I just, I just, I just got Scrivener a few months ago. Yeah. You want to know what parts of Scrivener I use? The binder. Yeah, me too. that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is Scrivener. how I plot. I tried. So I, I my mind is Scrivener blown by the thought of using spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah. Well, what you do is you have a row for every scene and then you have a column for every plot, subplot and character arc and then you fill in the boxes and then you color code. You can just write it. And then yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my thought. Jenny said. But yeah, you can write it cuz see cuz Jenny when I try to just out. write it, I end up with like 50,000 words that go nowhere. Fair. Fair. <laughs> It doesn't work for me. I've tried. It, it can That's happen. So, yeah. It's so for an no entire romantic. wall of note cards that make me look like a serial killer. No, no, is, that is, I, is, if that anyone wants to see, I this will, will make you happy, Greta. Charlie. This will make you happy. This is behind my computer. <laughs> With the cork like, port. Uh, oh, no. yes. See, I love that. That's pretty, but I make that after I've drafted. With the cork port. Oh, like the wire outline. Going like this. Like, that's me trying to plot a book. Yeah. Like that's straight up, like a scene from like a detective, like a detective movie, where you're just like, like oh. and this goes here. Yeah, and then what if that happens? Yeah. yeah, I do. Piecing together I all the clues this of this fucking notes. madness of my mind. I don't know if you can see it in my in my thing, but okay. So I also do the sticky notes, but this is only after the book is done. Um, <clears throat> this was all of my sticky notes for my revision of um, <laughs> wow. my book two, and, and it was like. Boot. <laughs> yeah, that is I was like, <laughs> this was so much. This was so much suffering. I wanted to keep it as a trophy of like, bitch, I killed you. I like, I, beautiful suffering. I though. survived you, and you didn't kill me. And so it's like, yeah, that's my that's my trophy. But yeah, that doesn't happen until after I've drafted, and then I read it and go, this is shit. This is broken, and fix this. And it makes you feel so better. Even after all my plotting, I read my first draft and go, this is shit. This, this is shit. broken. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's just like that inevitable. Feel better. Yeah. I don't know who could write a first draft and think like this is brilliant. 
Probably there's someone out there. I but that I'm has to take a lot of met many of those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they exist, like, unfortunately. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the audacity of them to exist. Do we aspire <laughs> to the or are they wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like I can't I can't imagine going through a first draft and like things being so well set up that I'm like, yeah, I'm satisfied with this. I'm like, no, this is a hot dumpster fire, and there's like a lot of a lot of fire they, extinguishers that need to be taken like to this the thing. rare people who can edit as they draft. It's probably yeah, yeah. I edit as maybe, I draft. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I cannot yeah. edit as I draft. Otherwise, no, I, will never I will never finish it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I can end up with a pretty clean draft, like structurally clean, but like right. the line level scene stuff needs changed, and maybe a scene needs pulled or added somewhere, but. Usually, structurally, by the time my first draft is done, it's fine. As right, like the major the set pieces yeah. are there. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that, yeah. Like, that was how it was for me with Mushroom Blues. The book that I wrote before that was like, I edited as I as I wrote my first draft, and it took me like two fucking years. And I'm like, this is a stupid <laughs> process. That shouldn't be how it goes. <laughs> and so with Mushroom Blues, I wrote it in like way less time. Like yeah. everything, like the first draft and the revisions and all of it in like less than a year and i'm like why did i put myself through that obviously it's like you have to go through the shitty times in order to realize like that's not the good way to do it and that's yeah, why so well, many authors write books work. yeah yeah like a you. lot of writers end up writing a book before the one that they publish but still yeah it's like or if, <clears throat> four books <clears throat> if you're me yeah, yeah. <laughs> i I, i've got a lot more than that i've been doing this a long time so don't worry about it you're, you're doing great mj <laughs> we're crushing you it got this girl. okay we got a question from zero zaku what are some of the fantasy series the fantasy series that you all have read that are older but are masterful that no one talks about Ooh, that no one talks about Ooh. uh i have one because i'm obsessed with guy gabriel k his oh, yes. tapestry books i oh, love guys i love books. them so much nick, nick <laughs> eames like really really got me into guy gabriel k because he's just the biggest fanboy but okay. it's like I first I read Tigana first. Um, Very good. But I'm gonna get. And then I think I read like the lines of of Al Rasan. Mm -hmm. But holy shit! Like his entire bibliography yeah. is just brilliant. He's brilliant. You can tell Canadian he's a treasure. Too. He's just yeah. got like, Canadian treasure, bros. Yeah, I had not heard of him until last week when my Canadian coworkers were all he's like, Guy Gabriel K. I'm like, who is this person? Yeah. <laughs> I don't a know Canadian what I'm talking treasure, about. Never Jenny. heard of Canadian him. Treasure. Never heard of a single one of his books. It must be, yeah, like it Canadian thing. They all. they all know him. <laughs> they all read him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Guy Guy Gabriel K is fantastic. Yeah. I don't I don't know how you uh qualify older. And the fact that this is the one that I thought of hurts me because it was like, it was published in 2006 and it's like, that's not old, is it? It's like, yeah, actually, it's like, <laughs> Maybe. like 20 years old almost. <laughs> there, yeah. there are people, there are people that the might be listening and watching. Vote. Yeah. Yeah. The book, the book yeah. is legal, is legal drinking age. So I guess yeah. it's older. Oh, well, not in America. Not in America. Not. <laughs> no, in Quebec. In Quebec, yes. In Quebec, yeah. <laughs> And I, I, I'm close enough to go back that it counts. <laughs> we'll just yeah. cross the border. Again. You're very but close. Anyway, yeah. um, so it's Winter Birth called, uh, by Brian Reckley. It's the first in a trilogy. And it's very it's very old school in that like it's low magic, epic scope, um, very Celtic world building. Um, but the thing... Oh no, there is magic. There's like kind of like an elf question mark except they're really creepy. Um, and dangerous it's been a while since i read it but my point is this is the series that taught me that weather and setting is as much of a character as any of the people are where it's like mm. in this first book um somebody makes a really bad strategic choice and ends up in like this big proactive battle in the middle of a uh, a blizzard and it's like chapters and chapters of a lot of characters being really lost in the blizzard and like staggering around and going, oh shit, there's someone trying to kill me. And it was just like, it was so gripping of like, this this guy, this rich guy has killed all of these people because he was too impatient to wait for the blizzard that everybody knew was coming. And it was such a fascinating use of weather and how important it is in, mm -hmm. in a setting, especially when we're talking about 
you know, older settings where it's not like they can check their weather apps and go mm -hmm. back to their car or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, so just going to wait it out in my car. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> or in my little heated basement, but it's like, I, I really liked his stuff and it like, it stuck with me for a really long time, even though I don't think I remember anything that happens in this book. That I read. You got to reread it. You got to reread it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to, <laughs> but that that blizzard like i i think i did read this when it came out so it's possible that i read it 20 years ago no i'm not that old that doesn't mm. sound right maybe more like 15 <laughs> years ago and we i, I still okay. remember i <laughs> no but i had kids so like it's, i'm not that old <laughs> um yeah i still remember that blizzard um and just like the weight of the setting and how it was just as dangerous as any of the people were. And it was really fascinating for me. Like the weather as an antagonist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, it's, it's a neutral party. Like it, it don't give a shit about your stupid right. political squabbles, you know? <laughs> um, but they just don't, it's just, yeah, it was a really interesting way to throw some wrenches in their petty political squabbles. Fuck you. Here's snow. <laughs> I love how that, yeah, you're like good Canadian pick, Chris. Yeah. Another one. Yeah, this, Another Canadian this, treasure. Yeah. This, no. this book has a blizzard in it. I liked it. That spoke I to me on a it. cultural level. Oh, my God. You got to say it real simple like that. It's got a blizzard in it. I like it. It's, it's got snow. I felt seen and represented. Low key, that's like how I write Goodreads reviews when I'm not blurbing the book. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, this book had snow. I liked it. I like feel seen. <laughs> Oh That's me. Um, yeah, I'm gonna expand this question. I'm gonna make it like fantasy and sci-fi. Um, yeah, so Jenny, I'll, so I'll toss it to you. Yeah. I was actually gonna give a fantasy um, example. Okay. So right. Jenny's like, don't put me I in a box. <laughs> Why? You don't know um, I, military. I feel like some people probably <laughs> know this like one, but I feel like I don't hear people talk about it. So Jim Butcher, right? Dresden Files. Everybody knows it. Great. Yeah. Codex Alera, though, is amazing. amazing. Like, yeah. I don't feel like a lot of people have read it for some reason, but it's so good. It's like, I remember maybe it was the interview you guys did with him. I don't even know, but I think he it was, was like he was like Pokemon. That, but... He was like Pokemon is like a yeah. As as, it was like comps. Yeah. apparently it was written <laughs> on a so dare fair, of like he's. I think he had said he had written it on a dare of like combining the Ninth Roman Legion with mm -hmm. Pokemon. Yep, it exactly. was like I yep. That like... is exactly what it is. Like that's so weird, but it's just it was very well done, very good, like great characterization. Like it was one of the first like that kind of fantasy that I had read. Like I was mostly sci-fi before that. And then I met my husband and he was like, here's fantasy. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, great. This thing uh, you've never yeah, heard. This is really good also one, yeah. never heard. <laughs> I feel like oh, dare amazing. writing and spite writing together come up with some of the most amazing conceptual stuff where it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can do that, whatever. And then Try it's me. just like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right>? I love <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> Fucking watch. Yeah, hold, me. hold my beer. Yeah. Oh my, hold my beer, you drippy bucket. I'm gonna write yeah. this shit. Or or in Adrian's oh. case, hold my hallucinogens. Hold my hallucin <laughs> hold my baggie. Hold my baggie. Yeah. I got some shit to write. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Uh Jen. I honestly can't think of any right now. Uh this is would usually be the part where I would turn to my bookshelf and go, oh, yeah, something, but I am in the spare room at my parents' house. So yeah, the only Sorry. reason I was able to remember this You're is like, because mystery. I could see it. Yeah, like, like right there. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know what are books, right? That's I, honestly like that's like anytime someone asks you like, oh, what's your favorite yeah. X You're like, thing? What's a book? I've never heard of this. Read. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think <laughs> I, to I, whatever. I do <laughs> those. Yeah. All right, MJ. What about you then? Yeah, so I have a couple. Um, so the I mean, everybody knows Diana Wynne Jones, but um, Chronicles of Crestomancy, I feel like, is an underrated gem that a lot of people haven't read. Uh, it's so good. I literally had to buy a new copy of because they come. It's it's like six tales, but they're in two like omnibus things okay. uh, of three each. And the first one is the best one, in my humble opinion, uh, which you can tell because my childhood edition, I literally, the spine was held together with duct tape. I read it so many times. Um, 
but it's so good it's like set in this world where like when uh i mean it's it's kind of classic like multiple realities like every uh decision major decision that's made wars that are won blah 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 like reality splits 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 so there's like and there's nine major worlds but then there's a bunch of different sub worlds and the people that have magic so there's a version of you in each of the nine worlds but if you are like a particularly powerful magician there may only be one you right and so like all mm. nine lives are like condensed into one person uh and that's an enchanter right ah oh my god it was so good i read these books so many times as a kid so that's one um and then the other one i don't know if it's really fantasy but it's talking animals so i'm counting it as fantasy because it counts that was my whole childhood was reading books about talking animals right um, wow well redwall but that's not underrated like everybody fucking knows redwall it is i think it is in north will, america i think in the uk it's much bigger it's than, much bigger i don't know i've never, never traveled outside the north american continent until i was a teenager and i was obsessed so i think it's big here uh <laughs> <laughs> it was well, in my know. world i'm in michigan we're basically canada so maybe not uh, <laughs> yeah, but, you're an honorary canadian in michigan yeah, yeah. we're like we're like you know canadian wisconsin canadian. too Canada's yeah. chew. Um, Canadia. But Canadian. <laughs> but yeah, no, the other one, it's um, so it's the books, they're not really a series, but they're both books by, by the same author with like talking animals, and it's the sight and firebringer. Um, so good. So good. It's like so firebringer is the best one, in my again, humble opinion. But it's like the world is deer. It's all deer, and it's like deer in the forest, oh, and cool. like there's a prophecy and like the, the main character is like the recipient of this prophecy and like the herd is taken over by like these evil cult deer and like it's uh, he has to like go on this wild adventure across the you know whatever the wilds with his little deer friends um, and it sounds wholesome but it's actually like really violent uh, I reread it again <laughs> as an adult and I was like what the fuck was I reading <laughs> I like age 10 like there's a part where like there's like deer that are being like sacrificed ritually in front of a fire and i was like i was just reading this How in like the do? fourth grade like just vibing but um but yeah i'd recommend it to an adult audience <laughs> love it love it maybe don't read it to your kids but <laughs> yeah. uh connor connor's on fire tonight it's just diet, diet canada, canada. <laughs> uh, i think canada's diet canada michigan it's is probably like accurate. full sugar michigan full sugar canada canada zero. Oh, yeah no <laughs> Sugar. like all double the fucking sugar. additives double sugar <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um okay so mine is more sci-fi this isn't an author that is like super obscure but i just think so much of his work is obscure because people mostly only know the adaptations of his movie of his the movie adaptations of his books and that's philip k dick who's like my literary idol like outside of jeff andermere philip k dick is like my jam because he was like I the weird before it became weird dick and i realized i should not say it that way <laughs> I, say love okay. I love me some pk i love me i love me pkd let's say that <laughs> yeah, that's more what you meant <laughs> <laughs> but philip k dick it's like people know him because of the adaptations like blade runner is an adaptation yeah. of his book uh do andrew's dream of electric sheep or minority report is is an adaptation of a short story a scanner darkly is another adaptation of like a, I think it's like more like a novella. Um, and like The Man in the High Castle, that TV show is an adaptation of his book. Oh, but I the books are so much weirder. And there's just like so many strange fucking books in his bibliography that just make me so happy. And I was talking to a friend the other day uh, who uh, I was just telling him like, my book is out, like um, you might be interested because we used to nerd out about a lot of weird sci-fi and stuff like that. And he was like, you had me at Philip K. Dick. Um, you had me at Dick. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Andrew. And, yeah. And there's just so much weird stuff in his bibliography and so much of it has to do with psychedelics, which is probably why it resonates so deeply with me. <laughs> but I recommend people you go. feel seen and represented. I feel so seen. Like there's <laughs> one book called The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, which I told MJ about because we were talking with Ken Liu about it. And, oh, and Ken cool. Ken is a big fan of Philip K. Dick as well. So it's like oh, yeah. this weird book where there's like people who live on a Mars colony, but it's Mars and it's super dusty and it's shit and life sucks. It's basically like living in the Dust Bowl, but on another planet. And they have Ooh. like these these like uh, dollhouses 
that they decorate and then sort of like furnish and everything like that. And then they take hallucinogens to then As you do. basically like put their consciousness into these, into these, basically like hallucinate that they're living the lives of these people in these little dollhouses. <laughs> it's super weird, but I just absolutely love it. Oh, I think we froze. You froze. Oh, no. I froze. <laughs> Can the everyone hear me again? Vibing. No, yeah, we, we can, can hear you. you. You're, You're just you, frozen. Yeah. Okay. The, well, we the internet well, I, has I kicked froze. Adrian out of girls' night. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, you man, with your penis. Leave. <laughs> Take your dick and go. <laughs> Take your dick and go. But yeah, so it's like they they hallucinate that they're like embodying these little dolls inside mm -hmm. of this dollhouse, and it's so weird, and it's so so like fantastical. And for me, that's the kind of stuff that it was like inspired me that you can kind of get weird with your fiction and and it's all good and so i think hopefully there'll be a little bit of a resurgence with philip k dick's work and if anyone out there wants to check it out um i highly recommend that you do but don't just don't just go for the adaptations explore his bibliography and you're going to find some really strange stuff <laughs> um okay i'm going to ask answer some of these other questions Ooh, so oh good go. go. one. Go. No, 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 Greta did. She talked about Guy Garvey okay. Oh, did she? oh you're right. Sorry. We've done Sometimes this twice. Told, now we've yeah. each lost track of one of the conversations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how often do you change your mind about details while writing mm. the rough draft? I saw that coming up. Um, and I actually, in the rough draft, I don't commit to any details unless I have to. Where, um, I've learned to just go like, in brackets is this still true double check later and then keep going <laughs> um yeah, well, and, brackets, and it's saved it. mm -hmm. exactly and then it's it's saved my sanity it it, it stopped me from doing the stupid stop start that mm -hmm. kept killing my momentum and it's like you know some things you have to decide obviously like i don't know like, the names of your characters and stuff but like the background stuff is so None of it's written in stone until I'm way deeper into revisions because right. otherwise I'll obsess over them and it drives me to a halt. I have like a lot of gang name question mark. Yeah. <laughs> Boss name question mark. Fight in, scene. In this Insert one. here. No, I, I write my drafting, but like deciding things like names and like the colors of shit and <laughs> like I've got I've got the macro, but the micro is just like I don't care. We'll figure that out later. And it it mm -hmm. saved me. It's it lets me draft. Yeah. yeah I think I one of like too. the misconceptions I had about outlining before I became a big outliner was that once something's in an outline, you are now chained to the outline mm -hmm. and you can't change mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. And I don't know why I had that idea in my head, but it's definitely not true. So like if that's what's keeping you from outlining. Just remember the outline yeah. is just like a guidepost. You can always like veer away from it as much as you want to, but it's like when you get lost in the weeds, that's what the outline is there for, for you to like have something to aim back. Guide towards. yourself back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing is set in stone pretty much until like it's published. <laughs> or like- say, till it goes to print, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's like anything like, I, I'm willing to change anything if it's if it makes the story better. I've I've pulled out like subplots. I've pulled out characters I was really fond of. Like I've changed books so much just in the interest of getting the story better. Where earlier I'd be like, no, I can't do this because six chapters ago I said X Y Z, and it's like, no, bitch, I can just like take that fucking chapter out. Yeah. Like I'm done. I'm I'm finishing this book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's on like anytime I have a beta reader come in, it's never the first draft. It's always like, yeah. the third draft because the first draft is literally unreadable mm -hmm. because it doesn't make sense because I've had so many of those details. Yeah, that exactly. Changed halfway through. I've had times where I killed a character and then halfway Same. through was like, oh, I need this bitch back. And so no. I just like yeah. <laughs> wrote her, I just kept writing her in and then I went back and fixed it later and I didn't kill her. I, you know I, I mean? did the like, same thing. I did the same thing in an early. <laughs> But the inverse, where it's like this for this scene to hit the way it needs to, this character needs to have died she like needs six to chapters have ago. Already be right. dead. Exactly. <laughs> and so I just kept writing as if that had happened. And so like it's like, oh, I was just dead now. Whatever. We're we're, we're gonna finish the book. Yeah. Well, thanks. It in post. Yeah. Yeah. 
Genevieve, Jenny? Um, like being a pantser, being a discovery writer, I tend to like yeah. overload on detail. And then like, I feel like I'm planting a bunch of seeds. And then by the time I finish mm -hmm. that first draft, I'm like, okay, which seeds actually sprouted? And yeah. which seeds are just like random information that I could go back and delete because it's not yeah, serving yeah, yeah. the plot anymore. Yeah. So like, that's that's my process. So a lot of stuff gets cut in post. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my process is it. very similar. Like just oh, I feel like I wouldn't say I group. overload too much on details, but I do try to put stuff in just with sci-fi it's hard too because sometimes it's like, do I need to spend eight hours researching this like two lines? And will the rest of the book make sense <laughs> if I don't research it? Really matter, or Jamie. yeah, Those like it's a whole awesome. thing. But yeah, I just, I write and then I turn, I do all caps um, when I'm like, put mm -hmm. some shit here. I'll do all caps for like a word I need to thesaurus even like to that degree where it's like, this yeah. isn't the right word, but you know what I mean. And here's a description of the word I need to figure out later. And I just try to keep going as much as possible. And then it's, it's kind of a headlights thing for me. And I think that's why I'm such a like, then go back and edit is because yeah. once I've gotten you know, mm -hmm. to like maybe a major beat point or something that I can kind of look back on that section and say, okay, is this doing everything that the intro needs to do? Is this doing everything that, you know, the second plot beat needs to do? And I can kind of like go back and edit and clean stuff up as I go. And I think for me, like my brain likes to feel confident about going forward. So if I know too much of what's behind me is messy, my brain's just going to shut down and it's not going to be able to do yeah. it. So like I have to go back and make it at least sort of clean at that point. Yeah, this is kind of answering yeah. Lantern Valley's question. Like, how often do you re-outline or revisit the plot when partway through drafts? I think, like, I don't I'll, think I'll... it necessarily <laughs> happens that much during the first draft, for me, at least. But then, like, revision, it's, like, going through again yeah. and again. Just doing I big feel like I, like, I need to know, like, what the characters know, like if they're coming together in a scene where like important plot stuff is happening and one knows what's happened and the other one doesn't, I need my previous stuff clean enough to have a good idea of how they're going to interact. Um, so like the big, the big scale stuff that will get, I'll stop and edit that stuff. I can't go forward. Like, like Jenny said, where if, if it's too messy and I don't actually know what, what the characters are you even aware of mm -hmm. i i can't because then the the relationship between me and them becomes almost broken where it's like i don't even know how they'll interact or react anymore so i have to go back and do that kind of fixing but the the small the small stuff it's it's all up in the air until pretty late <laughs> embarrassingly late <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know this isn't developed. I'll do it later. Just tell me if the characters work for you, sort of thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's kind of similar. Where it's like, if it's something that's like so monumental, I need to yeah kind of finish it and figure it out before I can kind of move on. Yeah. But yeah, like the small stuff, I can just kind of gloss over. Like, yeah, well, um, you know, fix it in not, post. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like literally, just like get those bold brackets and be like, mm -hmm. you know insert xyz here and i'll figure that shit out later or like in, in crystal's case like <laughs> Connor yeah. to give you a name. fiona give fiona is name. really good at it she's she had like a big list of names for me and oh i like gosh. pulling like um bucky jameson he's already dead awesome uh crassus what was it crassus kilcarney he's like that's the hitman on oh, no. it's like thank you fiona you Those saved my life I know, right? Yeah, I She's know. awesome. Naming stuff is my wow. least favorite part of. I've said it so yeah. many times of of writing fantasy is having a name, not just the yeah. people, but I have to name all the shit. Places. I gotta yeah. name the towns. Shit. Oh, they come across yeah. a river. I gotta name that bitch. Like, yeah, yeah. Andrea had her way of just be like, bitch river, bitch town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck. This. You know what? Maybe I I'll quit. write a, a tongue in cheek story <laughs> where everything is just foul mouthed town. in name. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta have bitch river as the new like dripping bucket where there's one in oh, yeah. every fantasy and science yeah. fiction novel for no yeah. apparent reason. <laughs> the bitch river. <laughs> yeah. Why is it called the bitch river? Oh, you want to know? Oh, right. Mm, if you have to ask. Hmm. You know. mm. Mm -hmm. You're the bitch, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the bitch. Uh, okay, Connor is asking. Okay, well, MJ, you and I can can we touch on this a little bit? Do you have a favorite episode you recorded or favorite thing you've learned during SFF Addicts? Um, probably. 
I think, like, in terms of the most fun I've had in a... In, because I have a lot of fun doing every episode of, of, of SFF Addicts. But the one with Ken Liu, he just like sparked this like nerdiness in me that I I just felt so invigorated. And I was like, I, I think I probably like sidelined MJ quite a lot during that episode where I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna get in here with another question. Cause I just like, <laughs> he's got me like off on this like, this train of thought that I need to kind of like, pick his brain about these things because this is my only opportunity to, to do so <laughs> kind of thing. But it was so fun because we were talking about like technology and the way it interacts with human history and artificial intelligence and all these kinds of topics that I'm really fascinated about and I want to explore more deeply in my work. Um, and actually using mushrooms as like an analogy for social networks and technology and artificial intelligence in some ways as well. But that episode just, yeah, I was, I was fucking flying high after that episode. I had so much fun. Yeah, that was a good one. I, trying to think of like my favorite episodes is really hard. A, just because I have the memory of a goldfish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is the episode? I didn't do that. I know, but it's just like, who have we even There's had on? Like everybody. Yeah. No, I mean, I uh, recent episodes, I, mean, I really enjoyed the one with Sebastian, the, the castle with uh, the swashbuckling. That one I've I've said like a bunch of times uh, was really uh, in, inspirational and, and really got me thinking. Um, I, the, honestly, early, pretty early episode, the one we did with Chuck Wendig um, was really fun and, and cool one for me. Um, that one was cool for me. I mean, A, just because we, the stuff we talked about was very cool. I love his books. Um, but also, like, it felt very full circle for me because I, when I was in the query trenches for the first time and I was drafting my first projects that never went anywhere, those four books that never <laughs> saw the light of day, thank God, um, I, uh, I was reading his blog, like, religiously and, like, just I felt like that was – because he has, like, a very tough log like voice in his blog where it's like harden up suck it up like you know what I mean like it's gonna be hard and I literally like he has a quote that he says in one of his episodes or episodes one of his blogs that's um harden the fuck up care bear which is like when you what you need and I literally made that my phone my phone background uh was that quote while I was querying um and I told him that when we were on the show because I was like, literally, you are the reason why I'm where I am right now because I I might have given up. You know what I mean? It's like it was it was hard. You guys know, like going through the query yeah. trenches is a bitch. Like it's I was in the trenches for like two years before I even got like a manuscript request. You know what I mean? Like it's it's hard. And uh, yeah, so that was a fun one for me just because it was like, oh, my God, like this was like you you were like a personal hero and now I'm talking to you. So that was a fun one for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. There are just so many ma amazing authors. Like even before I had MJ come on and I I made the switch. It was like some of the panels that I did were just wildly awesome. Like there was one that I did on dragons that was with like Ryan Cahill and Evan Winter. Oh. And like oh, I think yeah. I had like five or six authors on that panel, but it was just like rock as shit. We were just chatting for like two hours. Dude, the dragon. first panel I came oh, on, God. like before I was a co-host, was the panel on House of the Dragon, and yeah. you got we, 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 with, with uh, Miltos, Miltos Yorolamu, who was like yeah, one of the actors from... from Game of Thrones. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, like so... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're, we're I'm gonna be on a panel with him. <laughs> Yeah, it was okay. uh, what, what, what's the name of the character again? But he's like Arya's sword. Uh, um, sword yeah, yeah, yeah. The name is the escaping me right now. Um, Serial um, Pharrell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But that was just because like uh, my friend Liam, he he works in the film industry in the UK, and he's like, I know this guy, so he just like set that up. But that's the beauty of the podcasting world. It's like you can end up. Yeah. Him <laughs> and uh, so Christopher Paolini are the examples I give to people all the time when I'm like, you would be shocked who will come on your podcast if you just ask them. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you will be shocked <laughs> a lot of it is just a matter of like sending an email to people mm -hmm. or like reaching out on their contact form uh authors don't necessarily make it that hard to reach out to them um <laughs> it's probably more like <laughs> on the side of the people who are like i'm too afraid to ask so and so but it's like yeah 
Yeah, like Chuck says. Just like, or just don't even think to, right? Like, just don't even yeah. go, oh, well, they never come on my show. It's like, well, maybe they won't, but. Maybe they will. Yeah. <laughs> you never you know. Never know. <laughs> yeah. So I really, I really appreciate that. And just like all the amazing conversations that I've had with, with people over the last, what, like two and a half years is fucking wild. And we got to make this happen. Bitch River of Fantasy Anthology. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it, folks. <laughs> Everybody. want to head that up? Submit your best Can I be bitch the one river? sci-fi entry? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> An SFF anthology. You can, you can write that that bitch. Your bitch river can be an asteroid belt or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Or just like a jet stream on like a like an alien planet or something like that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. The bitch river galaxy. Bitch river galaxy. Right. <laughs> Oh my god, I am all for this. I dub the oh six of us the Bitch River Gang. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Wow, Bitch River right downstream from the dripping bucket. Yeah. You got this, Connor. You gotta be on you gotta be in the Bitch River anthology. I'm all in on this. <laughs> no, but it's perfect. It's like the Bitch River Gang actually sounds like a straight up gang. That would be It sounds like something like that you I might yeah. From like I might have to yeah. steal that. I might have like to steal it. Like, like I love like it. Prohibition era. That's like the perfect. Yeah, game that's, game. What right? I, that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, I'm, see, I'm gonna have the to steal it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get me, MJ. That's why we're married. I fucking love it when you do accents, MJ. It's great. Because <laughs> they're never good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like the time it, ends up being, it ends up being like like a kind of like 50s, like 40s, 50 era. You know, like soapbox kind of. For the record, kinda that's action. what I was actually going for on that one. Yeah. So crushed it. Nailed you got it. it, girl. You got it. It's just as good as my German accent. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the the bitch river gang, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, oh. well, we've been going an hour and a half. Uh, 180 people have been hanging out with us, uh, which is wild. So thank wild. you all for watching this shit show <laughs> of <with> us. celebration. <laughs> um, yeah, I will just uh, close it out. I will ask all of you to uh, share where they can, where people can find you on social media. Uh, maybe give like a little recommendation for something that you're reading or you just want to give a shout out to. Mm. Crystal? Oh, why do you keep doing that? Because you're, you're oh. next to me. Just hot seat, it. hot okay. seat. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Mostly you can find me um, on Twitter. Just my name is my handle. I cashed in on the unusual spelling. Um, uh, I'm also at Before We Go Blog and Fanfy Addict. Um, I'm also a columnist at Grimdark Magazine now. So, so that yeah. will be upcoming shortly. You're everywhere. you everywhere. You got a little... Yeah, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm growing in every part of the community, just like fungus. Um, there we go. And it's too far away for me to hold it up, but right now I'm reading a novella called uh, The Ballad of Black Tom. Um, it's a Tor.com Tor novella. So I'm about halfway Genevieve. through... <laughs> It's no, so that, that good. Is, is oh my gosh. I just like read yeah. that one in one sitting last week. Ooh. Yeah, it's it I'm I'm horrifically slow and I'm like I'm so angry at life for existing because the it's ballad like ballad of black tom, you say? I'm ready. Yeah, it's yeah, really by, it's by really good. It it definitely yeah. made me want to pick up his other work too, which I have yeah. I have Victor Laval's like two of those other books that I haven't gotten to yet, but it yeah, it's really good. And like speaking of spite writing, like I I always peek at the acknowledgments at the back. I can't, I couldn't tell you why. I don't know why I do this, but I notice like his acknowledgments is like a big breakdown of why he spite wrote this book as a response to uh, Lovecraft, and it's mm -hmm. like, bitch, sold. <laughs> like I'm so here for this. So yeah, definitely. Uh, it's short. It's uncomfortable, but in the best way. And Very good. Like, yeah, buy it. Buy Dude, the, I'm buy the all it. about the kind of creepy uncomfortable yeah. unsettling vibes right now like yeah. i'm, in a, I'm yeah. in a vein of that so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and one and of the interesting things that he going. said like in the acknowledgements like about yeah. like spite writing the book is like um what do you do when you find out that an author you love doesn't love you yeah literally hates mm -hmm. you for existing yeah 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 it's heavy um, Oof, and it yeah it, it bleeds into it and it's just such a earnest and vulnerable conversation with the genre while also being an amazing novella it's just it's 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 hitting all of these like need it need it need it <laughs> and i'm hooked yeah 
Well, speaking of heavy, go buy Crystal's books. Um, they're yeah, they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> they That's why boys. MJ's so strong right now. She's not actually yeah. going to the gym. I've been she's lifting she's my wife's books. books. Crystal's books. <laughs> <laughs> Brick and bone. <laughs> Bright wash. Brick and bone. Bright wash. Uh, Greta, what about you? Yeah, so you can find me. I'm mostly on Instagram these days, but I'm also on Twitter and TikTok at Greta K. Kelly. Um, and what am I reading right now? Well, for MJ, uh, I'm just starting The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. Um, she writes mostly YA uh, fiction and fantasy, but she is the, like just the queen of like creepy moody writing so it's the nice. the house of hollow was her first one that i read PBR right now <laughs> and it was really good sorry. so i'm looking forward to the sorry, invocations but i just actually got to meet lee bardugo when she was in milwaukee nice. so i, I picked up her newest book so i'm about to start that oh, oh that's such a gorgeous it. book yeah it looks good it looks really good immaculate. power lifting books <laughs> and grades together that's what the that's what the bitch river gang does <laughs> We're just powerlifting on our, on our, our, our intelligence. Powerlifting books and spirits. Exactly. <laughs> Lift your spirits. And uh, go, go get Greta's books. You can go get, um, yeah. what is it? Frozen Crown. You can go get, um, why did I? Queen of Days Queen is the most Days. recent one. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> brain fart. <laughs> yeah. Big brain fart. If you're a fan of heists and all that stuff, you can go get the Queen of Days. <laughs> and Among Thieves. Lots of good choices. Uh, Genevieve, what about you? I have been in such a reading slump lately. So it's either I'm reading nothing at all or I'm reading three books in one weekend. Um, <laughs> and most recently, I binged all of um, A.G. Slatter's books. Um, I had had her first like novel. Um, she'd written like a lot of other short stories, but I had have, I have had all the murmuring bones like on my TBR forever. Okay, and I just yeah. picked it up. And it was one of those things where I was like, this has been sitting on my shelf for like two years. How haven't I picked this up yet? <laughs> oh, and it was great. And then I like immediately went out and bought her other two books. Um, it, it's like creepy fantasy, but um, she just like has all these Easter eggs for the short stories she's written. And like, I love Easter eggs. Listen, like I love yeah. reading a book and being like, oh, I remember that little detail from the author's other book. Like when they name drop characters from a previous mm -hmm. book, even though they're completely unrelated stories, it's like, I get it. I'm in on it. I'm in on this. <laughs> I, I, know the, I understand um, that reference. <laughs> yes. And I was like, oh, it's that person. So uh, I, I really enjoyed her. The, like dark, creepy, like fantasy, a uh, uh, little bit fairy tale inspired too. Um, but they were exactly my vibe. Love it. And go go support awesome. Genevieve's work. You can get the um, yeah. the witch's heart. You can go get the Weaver and the Witch Queen. If you like witches, Genevieve's yeah, got gorgeous you. Uh, cover. Um, gorgeous, oh, gorgeous. and also I'm most active on Instagram um, at Jen Gornacek. And the Weaver and the Witch Queen is out in paperback on <laughs> June 11th. It's got a pretty yeah. blue cover now and uh, a reader's guide. And I fixed some mistakes Ooh. in it because they let you do that between books sometimes. <laughs> oh, when nice. you, um, call something the by extras. the wrong name. And then have to be like, can you fix all ten instances of this uh, this word yeah. that's not? Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Isn't that the beauty of self pub? You can just like, I can just fix. My yeah, the way I've done on the that, on, like on the download a couple of times already. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. listen, I would still be editing my books if I like if 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 I hadn't had a deadline, I would literally. You're like, with I I need someone to stop me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. All right, MJ, what about you? Yeah. So, hi. You can find me on hi. all the social media where I am sporadically in random locations with really no rhyme or reason. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm great at social media, you guys. Um, at MJ Coon Books is my handle everywhere, though. So, yeah, look me up wherever. Um, something I'm reading. So, I'm well, I'm reading a really weird book right now. Um, shocker um it's called who listens to our patreon episodes mj has been reading some weird ass dude shit. i've been on like a weird creepy book vibe kick lately yeah. and it's yeah um but yeah i'm reading it's called uh when we were animals and it's about um a like small town like a small town in small town america where when the kids hit puberty they turn feral for a year and it's just like this accepted Can't thing in leave. this town uh yeah and like literally like during the full moon everyone locks themselves in their houses 
uh, because the teenagers run wild in the streets and wow. like it's scary and like they, they're, they're, they're violent bad? and it's yeah, yeah that, sounds, that sounds like the purge meets teen wolf that's great yeah. yeah a little bit a little bit so i'm only like maybe i don't know maybe like 50 100 pages and something like that i'm not super far into it yet but um it's interesting it's kind of written more in like um like a literary style right like the prose is really it's not flowery but it's very poetic almost mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, it's weird i'm liking it though it's a weird vibe um um but yeah buy my books um among thieves thick as thieves buy them if you want to feed my cat yeah. because look how cute yeah. and fluffy he is the, oh but he's just it. skinny he needs more food we've dubbed it the tff <laughs> the thorin food fund the thorin food <laughs> fund <laughs> feed my baby with these babies the blue with baby, these babies and the green baby <laughs> Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Buy thick ass thieves so you can help Thorin get a thick ass. That's yeah. What it's all about. Make a thick ass, <laughs> thick ass thieves to make a thick ass Thorin. <laughs> thick ass Thorin. Fuck yes. Oh my god, Jenny. Uh yeah. So I'm also mostly on Instagram. Um, JS Dewis, all one word is my handle on everything. I am on the other things too, but I'm just mostly on the visual platform because I am very visual. Um, so. Yeah, I forget what else I was supposed to say. Oh, yeah, a recommendation. Oh, I read books. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I actually did just finish a really, this is not a creepy one, unlike the other recommendations. Um, like a cozy <laughs> little sci fi novella. Um, I don't, e it's quite short. I don't even know if it's a novella or whatever's shorter than the novella. Um, but it really easy to read, really fast read. It's called Moon Soul, um, like two words, Moon Soul by Nathaniel Luscombe. Um, it's, um a small press publisher um but it's just really like really like that cozy vibe like that i keep yeah. hearing like is a new thing <laughs> with fantasy but in the sci-fi genre which i find fascinating um and it was just really easy to read the world building was just super interesting it's one of those where it's like just enough that you're it makes your brain like ask a million questions and i get to fill in like oh is Ugh. it like what's going on here like what's this and then but it's just like a really close-knit story like close to the characters like a really interesting character study but um really quick easy to consume and yeah it's very very interesting so yeah very cool and go pick up jenny's Cozy books vibes. the last watch yes the exiled fleet rubicon and when is the relentless legion out that will be november 12th yeah right on I'm so excited. Like, I really can't wait. <laughs> and then when you said you're going to be writing and like you want to write like more short stories in the world, I was like, give them all to me. Yeah. <laughs> I need them. I Where know, do right? I sign up for like, them? You right can in my find vein, them on my please. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple. I have two on my Patreon right now, and then I'm almost done with a third. Um, I like started Patreon after like my books came out and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then I just paused billing for the last like two years. <laughs> so I was like, I can't do this every month. Like there's no way I'm depressed and everything's awful. But now I'm like back in it <laughs> and I'm like relatable. feeling really good and like inspired Gosh. again. So I'm hopefully going to start like actually posting new things soon. So, yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, you can find me uh, pretty much everywhere at Adrian M. Gibson. Yep. You can check out my website, adrianmgibson.com. You can pick up Mushroom Blues in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. You can also listen to the Mushroom Blues soundtrack on Bandcamp. Uh, that was produced by Spore, so you can check that out. Yeah, Crystal's got her copy too. Ooh, yeah, pretty yeah. hardcover. Oh, the hardcover. Oh, the hardcovers are so nice. Mm. Yeah. It is so nice. My, I can't wait to get my copies. <laughs> I'm so sad. I, I feel a little bad. Like, I want to show the listeners, but I feel bad, like, flaunting oh it. God. Like, I have my copy. Twist the night. I, I, I appreciate copy. it. It's okay. Um, but yeah, you can also support SF Epatics on Patreon. We got some cool goodies there, some bonus episodes every month, all kinds of fun stuff. If you want to support the show and keep us going for another hundred episodes, because uh, yeah. Angie and I are having a real fucking good time, and we really appreciate everyone who listens, everyone who supports the show, everyone who's watching right now, everyone who will watch or listen in the future. Thank you all so much. You are incredible. All five of you are incredible, and I'm very appreciative to have you in my life. MJ, you my boo. <laughs> you guys are You're, you Congrats, special. Adrian and yeah. MJ. This is, yeah, congratulations. Thank you for having us on for <laughs> celebrating. The Bitch River Gang signing out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>